Amen. Bless you. Thank you. Great for all those that are online. We just welcome you and bless you in the wonderful name of Jesus. We're going to have a good time this morning. The baptisms were amazing. First service and second service. I have a, just a, a privilege if they're here. We have five people who um, we would like to receive into membership this morning. And if Elizabeth and Omar, Sean, Judith, and Herbert are here, if you'd come just quickly, we just want to bless you and pray over you. Yeah, let's just welcome some of our new families and friends. So good. Yeah, come on up. Yeah, stay up. I want to just bless you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Would you extend your hands this way? And let's bless them. First of all, welcome to Life Church 7. We welcome you. We're so thankful for you and we bless you. So Father, we just bless these gifts. I bless these amazing people who love you and know you. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives. And Lord, corporately as a church, we welcome them into this family. We bless them in their mind and their emotions and their memory. Lord, cause them to flourish at Life Church 7. Father, we just, we just agree for that. Cause them to flourish. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. amen. Welcome. Bless you. Welcome. Welcome. So good. <clears throat> amen. This past week, I was um, just preparing. I've, I've been spending time just getting my voice back and re kind of recovering. Um, and so thankful for your prayer, your, your love and your concern. And um, so I think we're just about there. It is my goal not to hack and cough when I speak. <clears throat> So you just be in agreement with me. But I have a, a dear friend, a, a man that uh, we uh, have known each other many years. He's, he's a, a minister like myself, kids involved in ministry. And um, he currently is, I think, has just gone through his third round of chemo, his colon cancer. His name is Terry. And so I just, te I texted him this week and I said, Terry, if you would have your wife anoint you with oil, and right around 11.43, somewhere in there, as a congregation, we're gonna stand and we're gonna pray for the healing power of Jesus to touch your body. I know right now in Coeur d'Alene, your wife has anointed you with oil, and Terry, you and your wife are agreeing. We are at Life Church 7. We're taking time for a special prayer for you and others with cancer. That friends and family, maybe there are those that are here, and so, would you just stand with me and let's just agree for Terry and for others. <clears throat> let's agree that cancer must die in Jesus' name. That the kingdom is greater than cancer. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for Terry right now. I ask that the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ flows into his body. And cancer, colon cancer must die and wither. Not only for Ta Terry, for anyone else, else that is listening and hearing my voice. In the mighty name of Jesus, by your stripes we are healed. And so Father, we lift Terry and others up today. And in this resurrection season, we declare the divine healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's gonna be a, just have an awesome word for you this morning. I'd love to have you take your Bibles and go to, to uh, John 15. We have, these last weeks have done John 13, 14, 15. I think next week we'll do 16 and 17. These are the weighty words of Jesus. They're just hours before he goes to the cross. Jesus is saying things here that you won't find in other passages of scripture. His whole teaching on the vine is, you find, unique to John. Uh, John's gospel is probably 20 years later than Matthew, Mark, or Luke. Um, it's John's gospel is such an amazing gospel. It's a well-developed gospel of theology. It's, John writes 1st and 2nd, 3rd John. John writes the book of Revelation. John writes the gospel of John. And in all of those letters, you will find intimacy and fellowship with Jesus. 
That, that is this common theme. <clears throat> John has figured out this secret with Jesus. And he actually kind of says it in his book, the one whom Jesus loved the most. <clears throat> I hope that you assume that about God for you. I hope you live that way. I pretty much feel like I'm God's favorite. Because you are. If you know and love Jesus, God has lots of favorites in his kingdom. Amen. That's such a good word. A recent study by the Barner Group, and the Barner Group is a Christian research group. They sample hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, found that num the number one challenge to helping people grow spiritually is not that most people equate spirituality mature, with mat maturity. Let, let me start that again. A recent study by the Barna Group found that the number one challenge to helping people grow spiritually is that most people equate spiritual maturity with trying hard to follow the rules in the Bible. It's no wonder people also said that they find themselves unmotivated to pursue spiritual growth. If I think God's aim is to produce rule followers, spiritual growth will always be an obligation rather than a desire of my heart. Now, let me just say this quickly. Disobeying rules and just being rebellious is rebellion. So I'm in no way quantifying that, hey, I just gotta, I'm not gonna be a rule follower, I'm gonna be a maverick. That, that's, that's not the fruit of the Spirit. That's not what our design to be. But if I'm trying to follow the rules of Scripture and trying to do all the, the stuff, it'll have a disastrous effect on my heart. Rule keeping does not naturally evolve into living by faith. The Apostle Paul wrote, but only perpetuates itself in more and more rule keeping. In, only, in other words, it only results in a rule keeping, desire smothering, Bible reading, emotional controlling, self-righteous person who is not like me. Or anyone here at, Fair, at Life Church 7, right? In the end, I cannot follow God if I don't trust that he really loves me and has my best interests at heart. The letter kills, but the spirit gives life. There is an enormous difference between following rules and following Jesus. Truth be told, because I can follow rules without that ever cultivating having a right heart. The apostle John records Jesus gathering his disciples together in the final hours just before he goes to the cross. And in his final hours, Jesus would share with them some of his most important words before he left. His word changes everything for his disciples and all who follows them. My big idea today <clears throat> is this. All who are deeply connected to Jesus live fruitful, joy-filled lives. I called up my son, Nate, and, um, and they're doing a great job in Portland, and he, he and Myel are enjoying being a senior pastor, I think. <clears throat> and... Um, <clears throat> talked to him on the phone and I said, hey, Nate, what do you think of this big idea? All who are deeply connected to Jesus live fruitful, joy-filled lives. And then he listened, he goes, well, you know, give it some thought. And he goes, yeah, I think that's a good, that's a really good big idea. And then he sent me this note. He said, there's a huge difference between following rules and abiding in Christ because I can follow rules without cultivating the right heart. So here's my question for us this morning. How do you become and stay connected? How do you become like Jesus and stay connected to him? The, that is the goal for every person here who knows and loves Jesus. 
I want to become like Jesus. I left following me because I wanted to follow Jesus. Dan and Shirley from Island View, welcome pastors. So good to have you guys. I'm not trying to become the best version of me. That's humanism. I just got to be me. Well, if you do that, that is a life of a mess. Come on, let's be 100% honest. I want to free our hearts from things that entangle us. If you add Jesus to your life, you'll be miserable. If you surrender to Jesus, you will experience life and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Everything begins to work right when we surrender to Jesus. A big difference between surrendering and mentally assenting to him. And John 15 is all about this surrender. So let's go through it together. And, um, ooh, welcome Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow, thank you, Lord. Would you stand with me? This is gonna be so much better for you if you have the Holy Spirit right now, begin to take the word of life and begin to open it to your heart and to your mind. So Holy Spirit, we just do that. Jesus prayed the Father that he would send the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, here you are to reveal the love of the Father, to reveal Jesus to us this morning. We need revelation, Lord. We need clarity because we want with our whole heart, our whole mind and our whole strength, we want to love you and know you and walk with you. I believe that is the heart of every person here. So we say, welcome Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 15, beginning with verses one through five. Here's my first point, live life connected, live life fully connected to Jesus. So right where you're seated, just raise your hand. I wanna live my life fully connected to Jesus. Come on, yeah. Otherwise I don't, there's no reason to live for Jesus if you're not fully connected to him. So let's just all lift our hands up, just go. I think both hands, this is a both hand. I want to live my life fully connected to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let your heart do what your mind doesn't want to do. Hmm. Verse one says, I am the vine. This, these are the words of Jesus. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Say, he prunes. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. That's such a good thing. That it may bear what? Let's all read this together. Just follow me. You are already clean. Because, oh, we got to do this all together. This is mass participation. Let's try it again. Verse three, you are already clean. Because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me. And I in you, you. as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, itself. unless it abides in the vine, vine. neither can you, you. unless you abide in me. me. So the word abide means remains in. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. I love this. For without me, You can do nothing. So Holy Spirit, let we just let that sink in. For without me, you can do nothing. Excuse me, here's some notes from verse two. All who are willing to cultivate a deep intimate connection to and in Christ will be fruitful. All who bear fruit will be pruned. Ah, just go ahead and raise your hand. Just get, I'm going to be pruned. 
I knew there wouldn't be very many hands. <clears throat> but you will. If you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to get pruned. So let's talk about pruning. Pruning speaks of freedom. <clears throat> New life. Health from those things that suck the life out of you. I have 38 vines or 40 vines, Concord vines. And <clears throat> this time every year I go out and, um, and I clip away all of the suckers. I clip away everything that is sucking life from the vine. And for Concord grapes, for those vines, for the branches, I need 33 nodes on one side and I need 33 nodes on the other side. So I go and I clip and I count the nodes. Every no node will produce a whole cluster of grape. And I'm just speaking life over them. I never hear the, the branches going, oh, don't cut me, don't cut me, don't cut me, don't cut me. <clears throat> I'm just going out there and I'm just clipping off everything that is sucking life. The design of pruning is so that you can be more fruitful. You can't be more fruitful unless you get suckers cut off of your life. Suckers mostly aren't people. <clears throat> can be poor time management. Can be wrong interests. It can be all, a host of things. Anything that is keeping me from being fruitful, I want it cut off. Surrender is the road into fruitfulness. Well, Pastor Wes, and I have people say to me, Pastor Wes, I love my marijuana. Awesome. How fruitful can you be all doped up? Oh man, I'm just so high. It's amazing. I just need to relax. But what if there were a host of things before Easter, this season, before resurrection days, that the Holy Spirit is saying, I want to prune you. Here's the difference between you and those vines. You get to choose whether you're going to be pruned or not. Yeah, I know. I'm going to keep the marijuana. Got a little bag. This feels so much better. I, I, I just use that for a funny. And if you're, if you're saying, you well, was, I never thought my marijuana was. Listen, the highest high that you get is found in Jesus. Every, everything you're looking for is found in Jesus. Get rid of anything. Let the Holy Spirit clip off anything that will bring disconnection from you and the vine. Why? Because the vine is where all the life and joy and peace and wonder is. <clears throat> Oh, that's such a good word. I won't say it. I'm going to keep going. <clears throat> Verse three. As I get older, I've been able to control my thoughts more with the help of the Holy Spirit. And it's worked out well for everybody. <clears throat> Verse three, abide with, here's my notes from verse three, abide with, with and in Jesus has a purifying, transforming effect on my heart and my soul. Abiding or remaining in Jesus is, say with me, delightful and transformational. It's the joy of being with and in the author of joy. No wonder one third of the kingdom of God is joy. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but what? Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. One third of the kingdom is joy and laughter. You know, I can tell that we have 
people that are fighting off a religious spirit, I say fighting off, because when somebody is laughing and enjoying the presence of God, they are so wound up. Ah, they gotta have order. Oh boy, that laughter really ticks me off. I think you should be sad. I think you should be mean. Anything but laughter and enjoying the presence of God. Well, I think there ought to be order. Your order or God's order? Because one third of the kingdom is laughter and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. And, and I, I just want to free our hearts from things that, live, that keep us living medi- in mediocrity. I want to be connected to Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> Often happens when you talk about laughter. For verse four, Jesus makes it clear. Fruitfulness, say with me, fruitfulness, fruitfulness is connectedness. Let's say it again. Fruitfulness is connectedness. Being connected looks like abiding or remaining in Jesus. It's not work. Man, my wife would be so ticked off at me if I came home and said, you know what, honey? Oh, awesome wife right here. <laughs> uh, you know, tell you the truth, honey, I, I came home, home really late. It's just work to be with you. How would that go in a marriage? I'm going to give you two and a half hours tonight and I'm going to work my way through it. Why would we ever treat the God of the universe that way? Why would we make a relationship with him that is meant to bring love and joy and peace and wonder, gratitude and to have our hearts stunned by his wonder? How could we turn that into hard work? What a trick of the enemy. Psalms, I think it is 16, in his presence is fullness of joy. <clears throat> how many need some joyfulness this morning? Yeah, how many? He said, I need some more joy. Yeah, come on. Well, take Beth out to lunch. <clears throat> You'll get joy. Verse five, here we go. Jesus emphasizes what our relationship with him is to look like. He is the vine and we are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Life Church 7, we are designed to bear incredible amount of fruit. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Fruitfulness in the kingdom of God depends on, a, on an abiding connection with and in Jesus. Jesus, listen, here we go. Jesus is always the vine. Ah, let's repeat this. Jesus is always the vine. Ah, let's, it's such freedom. Jesus is always the vine. He's always the source. Yeah. There's never a time that I am the vine and he is the branch. Jesus is the Lord of my life, the lover of my soul, my friend and constant companion. I am attached to him. Jesus is the vine, and he is in me, and I am in him. Whoa! That is such good news. Would you stand and apprehend this truth with me? We've got two more to go. <laughs> so just in case some were going, oh man, I got out early. <clears throat> Not really. So good. Would you just lift your hands with me? And I want you just to say with me, Jesus, you're the vine. I'm the branch. I surrender to you. Come and abide in me. Increase, let your life, the river of your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, your wonder, let it flow into me. 
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You can be seated. Number two, live life fully connected and fruitful. Live life fully connected and fruitful. Verse six says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Wow. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you will be my disciple. So my notes from verse six is this. I love that Jesus tells us the truth and warns us about casual carousel Christianity. I love that Jesus tells us the truth and warns us about casual carousel Christianity. Do you know what I mean by carousel Christianity? You know what a carousel is? Right over in Kennewick? You just get in on a horse and you just go round and round and round. Do, 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 And that's what our life with Christ, it's what our life in the kingdom starts to look like. We're just going in a circle. Do, 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 do. And we come to do our time on Sunday. Do, 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 do. And I, by all means, try to get off that carousel Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because I don't care if I live for the devil, I live for myself. I just want to find some freedom and joy. I invite you off the carousel of Christianity into deeply connected love and devotion to Jesus. And all this is on Sunday is a celebration of his goodness, his grace, his mercy. And Monday through Saturday is bringing transformation to the seven cities because we're designed to be fruitful. We're designed to be fruitful. Wow, thank you, Lord. Verses, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast. Uh, let's go to verse seven and eight. This describes the life at, life at its best with Jesus. It is an invitation from Jesus to you for this life and the life to come. Abiding in Christ and his words abiding in me make me fruitful. Abiding is the invitation of intimacy and fellowship with God. Lord, I want to abide in you. Things that are on God's heart now become the things that are on my heart. Things that move God are now moving me. As I delight myself in the Lord, he, he, my desires become his desires. And he says, whatever you ask in my name will be done for you. I wonder how many times we're asking for things with unaware of the preposition, if you abide in me, and if my words abide in you. The whole thing of doing the kingdom comes from a lifestyle of abiding. Right. Comes from knowing and loving Jesus. You cannot, you cannot add Jesus onto your life. I've got Jesus, Hare Krishna, Muhammad, got my work. Everything's got a little bit of a box. Get off of the throne of your life. Ask Jesus to come into your life and, and say, Jesus, come. I want to be connected to you. I want to know you. I want to abide in you. I want your life literally to be flowing. When people see me, they go like, does that guy know Jesus or what? <laughs> wow. We're designed to shine. Not to flicker. Well, I just don't want to stand out. That's not what the scripture says. We don't, we don't hide the light under a bushel. I'll tell you, the more you abide in Jesus, you kind of can't help yourself. You just stick out. Because the light and the love and the wonder and the goodness of Jesus 
shines out from you. It was such, a, such an amazing transformation. Let me just finish with three. Did I have less time this time? <laughs> or am I talking more? When I ask staff questions like that, they never say anything. Because <clears throat> we have a meeting on Tuesday and we talk. <clears throat> no one gives up anything. So let me finish verse chapter, my third point, and read this scripture, and then I just want to release a grace over each one of you. Number three, live life fully connected to God and love others well. Wow, this is such a big one right now. Can I say some things? If you don't love President Biden, then you're not loving well. You don't have to agree with one thing that he's done. You don't have to agree with anything of his policy. But when we make the prize our enemy, we step out of connection with God. Because for, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would, would have it, would not perish but have everlasting life. Loving people that we don't agree with requires deep connection. Woo-hoo-hoo! I know after 43 years of ministry, our design is to love everyone. Well, I love you with the love of the Lord, but I hate your guts. <clears throat> well, that doesn't work. Because I hate your guts comes out with this quasi, I love you with the love of the Lord. Look at what the, what, what the uh, Roman soldiers did to Jesus. He's on the cross, bleeding and dying. And he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Stephen, being stoned with stones. He says, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. The people who hated them the most, in their last hours, they demonstrate this. And the only way you could do that is if you're deeply connected to God. What happens when Nancy Pelosi, I'm just using these names because these are like, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. What happens? They get saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. And the power and the presence of God begins to transform their life. When you go, man, Pastor West, I'd have a lot less time to be angry with things. <laughs> Can I free your hearts from a, from a political spirit in such a political thing that Jesus said, my kingdom is not the kingdom of this world. I think everyone here should vote. And please ask the Holy Spirit who to vote for before you vote. (laughs) Absolutely. But the help that America gets is not going to come from a political initiative. It's going to be an outpouring and moving of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's going to be Christ coming in and transforming our lives. Wow, TRL 25, so good. Would you stand with me? The worship team's gonna come. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we just stop and we just abide in you. Right now, Lord, we let go of all the things that are offending us. We let go of anger, rage, bitterness. And we just attach, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we attach ourselves to you, Jesus. To come in and to wash our mind and our heart and our spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit, come. Come, breathe your life into us. We need you, Lord. We need you. We need you. 
with people just praying. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor Wes, I want to connect to Jesus. I want Jesus to come into my life, to forgive me of my sins. I want Jesus, I want his love, his grace, and his mercy to come into my life. If that's you this morning, would you raise your hand? I'm gonna pray for you right where you're standing. Yeah, yeah, see those hands up there? Yeah, hands here, yeah. Yeah, anyone else? Yeah, hands here. Right now, you're just saying, I wanna connect to Jesus. I want us just to all repeat this prayer together. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I want to be connected to you. You are the vine. I am the branch. And Jesus, I surrender to you right now. Let your life flow into me and make me new. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Can we give the Lord praise for all of us? The Jesus Gathering tonight is at six o'clock and it's just more of what we're talking about. I just felt like in a season we're to, take, to come to Jesus Gatherings and open our hearts and become more and more connected to Christ. That's, that's the whole structure for Jesus Gatherings. It starts at six o'clock. Last week we had an amazing time. If you're able to come, I encourage you to come. You'll be strengthened and enriched and encouraged. I think it's important though to dance and laugh and worship. A number of people just gave their hearts to the Lord. We had people that um, were baptized in both services. And uh, we're gonna go back to the first song, right? Awesome. So I'm just gonna invite, just for a moment, a group of people you just wanna say, I just wanna come and celebrate God's goodness, being connected to Jesus. If that's you, would you just leave your seat and just come? Just all come on up, yeah. You just want to come up and just say, I want to come and celebrate being connected to Jesus, abiding in Him and Christ in me. And then Jim's going to close out. Yep. Here we go.